In just hours, the Supreme Court will deliver its long-awaited ruling. Is former President Trump immune from being prosecuted? And after his debate performance, President Biden's future as the Democratic candidate remains a topic of discussion in his party. The Morning Rundown starts now. From the Straight Arrow News Studio, bringing the stories that matter to you from across the United States and around the world, this is The Morning Rundown. It's Monday, July 1st. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kara Rucker. Today is the day we're expecting a ruling from the Supreme Court on whether former President Donald Trump has immunity from criminal prosecution. That is one of the decisions left as the Supreme Court wraps up its current term. Chief Justice John Roberts announced on Friday that the much anticipated decision concerning the former president and all remaining opinions will come down starting at 10 a.m. today. The court deciding if the former president is immune from being prosecuted in the federal election interference case where he's accused of conspiring to obstruct the 2020 presidential election. Trump has argued that he should be immune from criminal charges related to any official acts taken while in office, saying future presidents would not be able to function without immunity. A federal appeals court rejected Trump's claim back in February, with the court agreeing to hear the case a few weeks later. During arguments in April, the court focused in on deciding which acts are private and which are considered part of the role of president. In a decision on Friday, the Supreme Court limited obstruction charges that have been brought against January 6 rioters. The charge is also one of the four brought against former President Trump in this federal case. Also today, the justices will issue a ruling when it comes to states passing their own laws to regulate how social media companies moderate content on their platforms. The fallout from last week's presidential debate continued to make headlines over the weekend, with President Joe Biden's future as a candidate being questioned following his debate performance. NBC News releasing a report on Saturday that the Biden family would discuss the future of the president's re-election campaign during a previously planned weekend family gathering at Camp David. Biden's campaign saying the report was false, calling it 100 percent media fabricated and that Biden will be the Democratic nominee. Biden advisors telling CNN at Camp David the president's family, including the first lady and son Hunter Biden, encouraged him to stay in the race. Those advisors say there were talks about whether the campaign staffers who helped the president prepare for the debate should be fired. Some Democrats shifting the blame to Biden's campaign team. South Carolina Congressman James Clyburn saying it was a case of preparation overload and the president should continue to run on his record. Democratic Congressman Jamie Raskin, meanwhile, has admitted there are ongoing serious conversations in the party following the debate. Well, I mean, this is what a real political party looks like, and this is what a real political party does. Um, but obviously, there was a, a big problem with uh, Joe Biden's debate performance. And there's also just a tremendous reservoir of affection and love for Joe Biden in our party. And so this makes it uh, a difficult situation for everybody. But there are very honest and serious and rigorous conversations taking place at every level of our party. Um, because it is a political party and we have differences of point of view. Raskin says whatever Biden decides, the Democratic Party will be unified. Biden himself has spoken out about his debate performance, first at a rally in North Carolina on Friday, saying he doesn't debate as well as he used to, and then telling supporters during a campaign fundraiser in New Jersey over the weekend, quote, I understand the concern after the debate. I get it. I didn't have a great night, but I'm going to be fighting harder. The Justice Department is giving Boeing the chance to avoid trial in connection with two 737 MAX crashes that left a total of nearly 350 people dead. The DOJ has offered Boeing a deal that would include three years probation, a fine, and a corporate monitor to ensure safety compliance in exchange for a guilty plea to criminal charges. The potential plea deal comes after repeated safety failures at Boeing that have resulted in multiple federal investigations, which the DOJ said last month was a breach of the terms of a 2021 agreement in which the company avoided criminal charges for two fatal crashes.
If Boeing agrees, a judge will have to sign off on the deal. The lawyer who represented 15 families of those killed in the plane crashes called this a, quote, sweetheart deal and said they will object to it. U.S. military bases across Europe are on a heightened terror alert. They've been put on an alert level called Charlie, the second highest state of alert, which according to the Army applies when an incident occurs or intelligence is received, indicating some form of terrorist action or targeting against personnel or facilities is likely. One U.S. official telling Fox News that intelligence points to a potential attack on U.S. bases over the next week or so. Officials have not said what intel led to the heightened security protocol. Hurricane Beryl is now a major Category 4 storm after it picked up power and speed on Sunday over the Caribbean. Beryl is now the earliest Category 4 hurricane in the Atlantic on record. The storm expected to make landfall over the Windward Islands this morning. The hurricane's eye is forecast to track just south of Barbados with 130 miles per hour winds, bringing up to six inches of rain. And while it's too soon to know for sure, barrel or remnants of the storm could reach southern Texas by the weekend, bringing heavy rain to the area. Finally this morning, Simone Biles has done it again. The reigning gymnastics world champion is headed to her third Olympics. Biles came in first place at the 2024 U.S. Olympic gymnastics trials in Minneapolis on Sunday. Biles returned to competitive gymnastics last year after withdrawing from the team final and individual all around at the 2020 Olympics, saying she was suffering from the twisties, which is a mental block that causes gymnasts to lose their body position. Biles taking an extended break to prioritize her mental health. At 27 years old, the four-time Olympic gold medalist, who's also the most decorated gymnast ever, will be the oldest female American gymnast to compete at the Olympics in 72 years. These are your top stories for this Monday. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Until then, I'm Kara Rucker. Have a great day.